two blocks to creating any type of change that you want in your life and of course it's really important that you remove these two blocks in order that you have momentum and that you have the ability to succeed in whatever change you want to create. So let's go through the two blocks and I'll talk about solutions to those at the same time. So the first block to creating change in your life is apathy. So apathy is a lack of concern, it's a lack of enthusiasm, it's that sense that you know something needs to change but you kind of have this uh, kind of feeling about it. So sometimes I meet people and they want to invest in creating change and they want to have the conversation about creating change but actually there's not a great deal of enthusiasm or urgency or commitment or strong intention to actually be involved and make the change happen. What it is is that there's an intellectual understanding that something isn't right and an intellectual conversation going on, I should do something about this, I should probably do this or do that, I should probably stop doing this or that. Now obviously an intellectual understanding and that conversation is a really important starting point but it is missing emotion. It is missing the energy, the drive, the get up, the go, the commitment that will take it from an understanding and a conversation into action, into commitment. Apathy is sort of like a dangerous place to be in terms of emotional state when you want to create change. Because if you're apathetic, you'll just sort of stay in limbo land. It's not enough leverage to get you into doing something to create change and you're not really happy with where you're at, so you stay in this transitional state. And it's a very sort of negative state to be in because it's not like you're happy with where you're at. You know you don't want to be there, where there is something to do with your health, you don't want to be in that state of health, or you don't want to be in that state of lifestyle, or you don't want to be in that financial state, or you don't want to be in that relationship, or you don't want to be in the job you're in, or whatever it is. So you know that, and yet apathy will keep you kind of sitting in it, right? So three states that it's okay to be in, is a state where you actually enjoy where you're at, there's no problem, or you don't enjoy where you're at, but you're motivated and committed and intentional, and you've got energy and emotion that will help leverage you out, or you've already moved on and you're in a state you really want to be in. The other state you don't want to be in is apathy because there's nowhere to go with that. So if you're in a state of apathy, you know something should change. You will know because you'll hear yourself saying that I should do this, I should do that. There's not really any drive behind it. Lack of concern, lack of commitment, lack of drive, lack of follow through, lack of intention. You're not really putting in any kind of mental, emotional structure around yourself in order to create change. Then you really want to light a fire under yourself, okay? You need to burn off that apathy and to create a different emotional state for yourself. The way to do that is to train yourself to become intolerant of where you stand. The best way to become intolerant of where you stand so that you see that you want to create change and that you get enthusiastic about it is to really clearly pinpoint the costs to you of not moving, the cost to you of not changing, the cost to you of staying put, the cost to you of missing out on what else you could be doing, experiencing, creating for yourself. You need to feel a little bit of discomfort <laughs> to burn that apathy. And that discomfort will come when you look at it really blatantly and you say, you know what? I'm apathetic about this at the moment, but I need to get real with myself because these are the things that this is costing me. This is the price I'm paying. And if I'm not paying it now, geez, I'm gonna pay that price soon if I don't make a change. It's not being negative, it's being realistic and it's saying, do I want to wait for things to get worse? Do I want to wait for my health to get worse, my financial situation to get worse, my relationship to actually break down and end, my performance at work to get so bad because I'm so miserable that I may end up getting fired or performance managed? Do I want to wait for those things to happen in order for me to get motivated to move? And what kind of person do I want to be and what kind of life do I want to live? Light a fire under yourself. You need to do that for yourself and you're more than capable of doing it. You want to get yourself out of apathy, you want to springboard out of that into a state where you get motivated and enthusiastic enough to take one action. Because once you take one action you'll get a bit of momentum and that will start to help you get on a whole new trajectory and a whole new cycle. Now the second block to creating change in your life which is sort of related to apathy and is a real problem for a lot of people is comfort. Comfort? is a bit of an enemy to creating change. Because if you're comfortable, where's the incentive, right? 
it's a little bit different to apathy. Where is the incentive for you to move when you're comfortable? You know, you can kind of jolly along each day and things are okay, they're not great, they're not terrible, it's kind of comfortable. You're familiar, you're familiar with what you do, you're familiar with where you go, you're familiar with your patterns, you're familiar with the pain that comes from your patterns, you're familiar with all these aspects of your life and when you're familiar and you're in a level of comfort with them, there's not a great deal of motivation. There's a reason why people overcome great odds. There's a reason why people that are in deep, dark, painful circumstances create powerful change. Because they are in such discomfort that they will do whatever it takes to get out of that pain and discomfort. I always say if you look at a bell curve and you say here is deep pain and suffering on one end, which is kind of a small proportion of the population, and then you've got like real ecstatic happiness and everything in your life working, and you've got that other end, and then you've got this middle mainstream of society who sit in the comfort zone. The comfort zone is dangerous because there's not a lot of momentum, right? And people that are in deep pain and suffering, I don't ever feel deeply worried for those people because I know something about their state. If they're in deep pain and discomfort, they are actually in a far better position to springboard from pain and discomfort right past everybody that's in the comfort zone, way over here to sorting out their life and having happiness and peace and getting everything working the way they want because they've got leverage, right? Pain and discomfort are leverage. So, obviously, I'm not saying that you need to create pain in your life and you need to get rid of all your comfort. What you need to do is get real about it. Again, it's saying, you know what, I am a bit comfortable in here. I remember being like that in my own life. I had so much comfort that there was not really a lot of incentive to push myself and yet I knew something had to change and I had that conversation I really should do something. I really should start to create some change. I really should try something different because my intuition's telling me. But I was just way too comfortable. And you know what? I'll tell you right now, you can train yourself to get an action and you can train yourself to look at that comfort and go, it's comfortable, but is it fulfilling? Because comfort does not equal fulfillment. It doesn't. I know a lot of people who will tell you that comfort does not equal fulfillment, does not equal satisfaction, does not equal happiness. And so if you are in comfort, all you have to do is say to yourself, do I want a comfortable life or do I want to rock this life? Do I want a comfortable life or do I want to get soul aligned and really live? And do I want to sit on my deathbed at the end of my life and say, yeah, I soaked up everything this life had to offer? Do I want a comfortable life or do I want to feel alive? Right? I know a lot of people have got comfortable lives that don't feel alive. So I've given you two blocks to creating change in your life. If you are in a state of apathy or you are in a state of comfort, both of those are blocks to creating change. Now you don't have to get yourself in discomfort. All you have to do is train yourself, light a fire under yourself so you move from apathy to motivation and enthusiasm. Light a fire under yourself so you move from being comfortable to saying, that's not good enough for me. I just don't want comfort. I want to feel alive and fulfilled. I want to take it to the next level. So those are mental shifts training your mind, and that will bring about an emotional shift. And when you get the emotional shift, that is the foundation for creating change in your life in any area at all. So I hope this has been helpful. I'd love for you to reach out and let me know. Are you noticing you're in a state of apathy or maybe you're a little too comfortable in your life? What are you going to do about that? Are you going to start training your mind so that you can create an emotional shift so you can light that fire under yourself, get in the commitment, get in the enthusiasm, get in the state of concern that this is not where you want to be, give yourself that propulsion to move forward. I'd love to hear from you. Please do leave a comment. If this has been helpful, please give it a thumbs up and I'd love for you to subscribe if you're here on social media so we can stay in touch. If you know anyone who's experiencing apathy or maybe they're a bit too comfortable and they're not acting on their goals and dreams, please do share this with them and I'm looking forward to bringing you more daily inspiration really soon.